What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Rivas Talk Sports. I'm continuing my NFL Divisional Bowl Prediction Series. In this video, we got the AFC North. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So with the first team I will be talking about is the Cleveland Browns. And my bowl prediction is that Miles Garrett will get a career high of at least 20 sacks. After his rookie year, he has not gone below 10 sacks. He is obviously probably one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. Arguably, whether you have him ranked above TJ Watt or TJ Watt above Miles Garrett, but regardless, he is one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. I do believe he could have gotten 20 sacks last season. Yes, he did win Defensive Player of the Year, but he did suffer a shoulder injury in Week 12 against the Denver Broncos. And, I, and honestly, had he played a full healthy season without that shoulder injury, he may have gotten 20 sacks. 2024, I believe it is the year that Miles Garrett breaks out of the teens and finally gets at least 20 sacks. In 2023, he finished second in pass rush wins and came in second in pass rush win rate percentage. I do believe that Miles Garrett will be a menace and will continue to be a menace against opposing tackles. And he plays a huge role in this Cleveland Browns defense. So my bold prediction for the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett will finally break out of the teens and get at least 20 sacks. Now, the next team I'm going to be talking about is the Pittsburgh Steelers. This might be a hot one, but TJ Watt will finally break the single season record in sacks. And he is my choice for defensive player of the year. As you see as in his stats, the past four, the past four years, TJ Watt has been off the charts as an outside linebacker and coming off the edge. And as you see in his fifth season in the NFL, he tied Michael Strahan with the most sacks in a single season at 22 and a half sacks that he did it in 15 games. So he did not play in two games. He played a full season for the first time in his career last year. TJ Watt healthy playing 17 games and wants to take what's his, which is what Miles Garrett has of that defensive player of the year award. I believe that TJ Watt will come into the season very hungry. And if there is anybody in the NFL that I can choose to break this single season record, especially in this upcoming season, it is TJ Watt. And once TJ Watt breaks that single season record in sacks, he will become the defensive player of the year. He may be a dark horse depending on who you ask, but TJ Watt, he has my vote for defensive player of the year. I do believe he'll break the single sacks record. 22 and a half sacks in 2021, five and a half in 2022, 19 in 2023. TJ Watt is going to elevate in 2024. He has Alex Highsmith on the other end. The Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers got Patrick Queen in free agency. They also got Peyton Wilson, who I believe could have been a fringe first round pick had it not been for his injuries during college. And they do have Cameron Hayward. On the defensive line, this Steelers defense, the steel, the steel curtain, if they're all healthy, this can be a very, very scary defense. And with everyone being healthy and the offensive line trying to have their attention to someone else besides TJ Watt, this will create a lot of one on one opportunities for TJ Watt. Go get that single season record in sacks and defensive player of the year, TJ Watt. Now, the third team I'm going to talk about is the Baltimore Ravens. And I do believe that Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry will combine for at least 2,000 plus rushing yards and about 20 rushing touchdowns. I do believe that Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry will be the most dominant quarterback, running back, rushing duo. The two others that I can think of is Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, and Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor. Anthony Richardson did get shut down last season, so it does remain up in the air of how his style is going to be. I do believe he'll be a dual threat quarterback, but will Shane Steichen want him to stay in the pocket more and prevent further injuries, 
Or did Anthony Richardson, instead of trying to run over other players, will he continue to slide? I just don't know how his style is going to be after that injury. So I'll kind of put that to the side. And now it would come down to Jackson Henry and Barkley and Hurts. I'm going to have to give Jackson and Henry as the most elite quarterback, running back, rushing duo over Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley. The reason being is because I believe that with the Eagles getting Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator, I think their offensive style is going to change a bit. I think Saquon Barkley will be more of a bell cow, and I think Jalen Hurts will remain in the pocket more rather than trying to scramble a lot. Um, Kellen Moore is very known for his pass-first style offensive scheme, and since Kellen Moore has been an offensive coordinator, their rushing play percentage has been around the 20s. So they do not run the ball as much to put them in the top 10 with Kellen Moore, an offensive coordinator. And I think this is the year where Jalen Hurts is probably going to work on his processing ability as he did have the same processing and decision-making time as Justin Fields. So I think this is going to be the year of Jalen Hurts staying in the pocket more, get the receivers involved, and allow Saquon to do the dirty work on the ground which leaves it to Jackson and Henry. I do think that Lamar Jackson will probably get about seven to 800 rushing yards. And I do think that Derrick Henry will probably get about 1,200 to 1,300 rushing yards. We'll probably get that combined 2,000 rushing yards. The RPOs are going to be lethal. The zones reads are going to be lethal. I do think that Derrick Henry will get most of the bulk in the red zone. Um, but when the box is going to be coming crashing down, expecting Derrick Henry to get the ball, this is where Lamar Jackson is going to be lethal going on the outside and just getting his opportunities. Their offensive line did change compared to last year. I believe they lost about three linemen in the offseason where they have pretty much brand new offensive linemen this upcoming season. We don't know how that line is going to hold up with Lamar Jackson staying in the pocket a lot and pause passing down. So I do see Lamar Jackson running out the pocket a little bit, trying to get some extra yardage, along with Derrick Henry getting the bell cow work. So this is my bold prediction for the Baltimore Ravens. Jackson and Henry will be the most elite quarterback running back duo in 2024 with at least 2,000 rushing yards and a combined 20 rushing touchdowns. Not saying that they'll each get 1,000 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. Like I said, Lamar, 7 to 800. Um, Derrick Henry, 1,200 to 1,300. And then Derrick Henry will probably get about 13 to 15 rushing touchdowns. And I think Lamar could probably squeeze out a bet, get about seven to eight. So I think they will meet these metrics. Now, last but not least, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. This is probably going to be another hot take as well. So with last but not least, with the Cincinnati Bengals, I do have them being the AFC North divisional winners this is gonna be an asterisk this comes down to how healthy will joe burrow be joe burrow has been injured quite a lot since coming to the nfl but when he is healthy playing and starting more than 10 games the bengals have won the afc north twice they've made the afc conference championship round once and they made it to the super bowl so pretty much, I understand it is a small sample size, but this goes to show you that Joe Burrow is an X factor and a key part of this team and this offense. If Joe Burrow is healthy and plays a full season, he is automatically a top three quarterback, top five, depending on who you ask. They did not make the playoffs this past season, but if Joe Burrow comes into the season healthy, plays a majority of the games, let's say about 14, 15 games, this team has a legitimate shot of winning the AFC North and could be contenders to be number one seeds in the AFC. Um, what people don't really know about this upcoming schedule is out of all AFC North teams, the Bengals have the easiest schedule. If I don't think the Browns or the Steelers will win the AFC North. I think it's going to come down to the Bengals and the Ravens. Um, I just give the Bengals the edge this upcoming season just due to their schedule. They had the 14th easiest schedule with a combined record of last year's teams of about 500. Meanwhile, the Ravens have one of the hardest schedules and a lot of heavy hitters in primetime games. Do I believe that they could probably win a few of them? 
Of course, the Ravens are probably one of the most well-coached teams in the NFL, but with the easy schedule that they have, the easy schedule compared to all of the AFC North teams in this division, and a healthy Joe Burrow, I think the Bengals can win the AFC North, potentially become number one seeds in the AFC, and I do believe that Joe Burrow can make this offense humming again if he is healthy. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up. And if, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe as I do make weekly football content. Thank you so much and catch you next time.